Hi, welcome to the video. My name is Zachronic, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Xur for May 27, 2022. You can find these Xur in this regular spot in the tower. Just make your way into the top left section of the hangar right here. You can find them right here next to the mountain. This is a high overview in case this is all you cared about. Starting out first up, we have the Colony, which is a very powerful and very good PvP exotic to have, or at least PvP weapon to have. I believe I have put it in my top 10 for PvP heavies, as it's just a really fun and very useful exotic to use. And it's also one of the more unique ones. It's essentially, you shoot a grenade, it has legs, and it walks up walls, ceilings, and floors. And at the very least, if enemies jump away from it, they have more inaccuracy while in the air. So you pop one down, they jump in the air, and you shoot them as they're in the air. So there's a lot of advantages and also easy hits with this particular weapon. And if you don't like this, you could just also direct impact and it does the same as a regular grenade launcher. So just do that. Following that for the hunter exotic, probably one of the ugliest looking exotics in the game, we have the worm has crown, which has an ornament that just straps something on the front of it. Um, and it's also a very good PVP exotic to have, has been for a long time. Essentially, dodging gives you a small amount of health and shield bump. It does not start your recovery per se, but it also gives you a decent amount of health and shields to re-engage, to have more health in a fight, and considering how often hunters dodge, it's always good to have. And even in PvE, this will keep you alive. As far as the roll goes, you'd like to see a lot of mobility, and the rest of it is an okay distribution. Keeping in mind the total stats is a little bit low. Following that, for the Titan Exotic, we have the Heart of Inmost Light. Probably one of the best exotics in the game for both PvP and PvE. I believe I give it like an 8.5 for both of them, which is very, very good. If you've never heard of it, using any of your three main abilities, Grenade Melee or Barricade, empowers them, making them charge faster and do more damage and have more health. And you combine this with one of my favorite builds these days, my Stasis build, where I get my Glacier Grenade every like 10 seconds. And normally that thing takes two and a half minutes. So it really goes to show, using this exotic with some other things, Things like grenade kickstart, the stasis fragment stuff, the shards, you can get your grenades really, really fast and have an amazing super as well. And this can be used in PvP, PvE, across all the different types. Solar 3.0, slap this on, you're going to have a great time. Although, personally, I still prefer Lorelei because sunspots are so good. As far as the roll goes, on this particular exotic, I guess you'd like to see resilience, discipline, and strength, because that's what it's built on. And it has a lot of resilience. Now, normally, I'm not a big fan of resilience, but if you don't know, they changed resilience. It also reduces the amount of damage you take from combatants. And if you don't know, you can literally go to your character, highlight what you have, and it literally shows you the damage resistance. And the first five levels, it seems, is not worth much because at tier 10, you actually get like a 40% resistance, which is kind of ridiculous considering that resilience hasn't been good for a long time. So having a high resilience for this particular exotic is actually not bad. And with this total stats of 64 being of average or above average, it fit, fits with your build, it might be really good. And following that, we have the Warlock Exotics, the Cardenstein Armlets, which is actually a very good melee-based exotic, especially for PvP, where you get instantly a bunch of health around half of your health and shields, and you restore, for like 8 seconds, you restore your health at like rift level recovery, which is obviously very, very powerful. The issue is most of the warlock melees are not very good and i have not tried the new solar snap for 3.0 yet but unless that is good this exotic probably won't see that much use but if you like going in close you like using shotguns you like going in for that punch this is a very good exotic to keep you alive as far as the stats go most of the time warlocks don't want mobility because it infers or it interferes with the icarus dash but it also has a lot of strength and very close to the average of 63 64 that i like to see but very low recovery so a very interesting set up for a very weird exotic. I don't know what happened with Bungie this season. They were just basically, look at this thing. This tooltip doesn't go away. They've got a lot of glitches in this DLC and they need to get on it. Following that, let's take a look. Again, look at this. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the legendary weapons. First up, the Seven Seraph SI-1. I'm not a big fan of this weapon. Lightweight frames in general for these sidearms are not my favorite. It has some range-based stuff, but these two perks don't work together and there are better ones. We have the Whispering Slab, which is Archer's Temo Demolitionist. And it does have fiberglass and it does have natural string on top of an accuracy masterwork, which if you can see here, the accuracy is quite low on this. You need to get that accuracy up, but Archer's Tempo Demolitionist is probably one of the better rolls you can get on this, so I would highly recommend this one. Following that, we have the Eternal Blaze on full auto disruption break. Not a big fan. Stability based stuff here, really not a big fan. We have Long Shadow, explosive payload, but no snapshot, so not really that useful. Uh, we have Widow's Bite, friendly planted Eye of the Storm. Not a great combo, some range stuff, but. Otherwise, kind of bad. Seventh Surf saw with field prep, firing line. Ooh, and a reload, and a pended light. Ooh, okay. 
So this is probably one of the better 7 Seraph saws out there, because field prep with firing line is really great. If you don't know, you can also crouch to reload faster, get a little even more faster with the reload speed. A lot of great stuff here. And of course, we have the Royal Entry, which is a field prep unrelenting, and it does not have impact casing, and this is not a good perk. I believe it can have impact casing, auto-loading, uh, lasting impressions, or obviously field prep lasting impressions, so there's definitely better roles. And of course, for the legendary armor, keep in mind this is just for the Titan, the Warlocks and Hunters will see a different set. First up, the well, first one is High Resilience Intellect, which may fit with your build, 61 is okay. We have a 62 with Recovery Intellect, I generally prefer this a little bit more. Uh, we have a 61 with Resilience Strength, not a great roll, and then Resilience Strength as a 63. Personally, find the 62 to be the best, but then again, Resilience is better than it's ever have been, so maybe Resilience is where you want it. And of course, for the exotic weapons, first up, for the Hawk Moon, we have the Moving Target. Moving Target is a decent thing to have on it, but neither one of these have Recoil Direction. I usually like to get the Recoil Direction, where it says Greatly Controls Recoil in either this one or this one. And uh, I think Alloy is static, but moving target's not bad, but you definitely want to go for Rangefinder. It does make quite a big difference for both modes. And of course, we have the Dead Man's Tail, which the Dead Man's Tail moving target is very nice to see. It has recoil direction, it has stability, handling, more stability and handling. Seems like a pretty good roll for the Dead Man's Tail. And again, moving target's quite good, although I think generally you'd prefer high cal rounds here. This is a pretty good and stable roll. And of course, I've already gotten it. Uh, make sure you pick up your exotic engrams. They guarantee you an exotic you've never received before, and it guarantees you with a very high stat roll. One I got was this one, the ACD feedback fence, when my my recording kind of messed up. So that's, that's what I got from it. And again, it's a high stat roll, and I've received every exotic, so it makes sense I got a repeat. And of course, if you haven't seen already, I do live stream after all of these videos, and of course, all the times on screen right now. Oftentimes, if you want advice for Destiny 2, I'd be more than happy to uh, recommend an Astacross video or a bite video. Uh, so just come check out the stream, and I'll do that. <laughs> And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Specifically, a big thank you to Mom, Dad, Christian Thompson, Kelly, and Archduck, Jacob Berg, my next two backgrounds, Panther, and Casey Reagan for the support on Patreon. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed my name, and I'll see you guys on the next one.